or succeeding in the plant game. I wouldn't like to be ripped out of my home, stripped, and then fondled and stuff. Who needs a boyfriend when you can just be caressed by your plants? Mer. Hello. Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma and today we're going to talk about a very special plant. I'm sure you know by now, you've read the title, you saw the thumbnail, but it is part of my set, the very special Kentia Palm. So I'm not going to sit like this the entire time because this is slightly inconvenient for me, but just wanted to show you the beauty that is my Kentia Palm. Just kidding, I share it with my boyfriend, but whatever. Yes, the beautiful Kentia Palm. Okay, so before it continues to stab me, I'll leave it slightly in so it can hang out here and I can stroke its fronds. As you can see, the Kentia Palm is absolutely fabulous. It's probably the biggest plant that we own. It's kind of a nice big statement piece and they're super hardy. They can last in a lot of different types of situations and so they're really good for the average person plant owner because they can tolerate quite a lot. Of course they have preferences, but we all have preferences. Whether or not we get them is a different story. The Latin name is Hoea Fosteriana, I think that's how you pronounce it. it might not be, um, I don't speak Latin, so <laughs> whatever. But the Kentia palm is also known as the thatch palm or a paradise palm. They're super popular and they've been popular for a really long time. This is actually one of Queen Victoria's favorite plants and she put it in all of her homes because she liked it so much. And I can see why it makes the house have a sort of tropical feel. It feels like you're in a jungle a little bit and they're super easy to maintain for the most part. So why not get up in there and buy those Kentia palms. They can also grow really big. I think the biggest indoors is like 12 feet or like three and a half meters, which is crazy. This one here is about a meter tall or so, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, I'm talking from the top of the soil to the top of the top frond here. If you talk from the bottom of the pot to the top of the frond, it's even taller. We also have it on a plant stand. So it's got another 10 inches from that, so. It's just the tallest thing we own, isn't it? Another good thing about the Kentia palm is that they are non-toxic to people and pets. As per usual, sorry if the light changes throughout this video. Um, England is all I have to say. It's just... I guess at some point I should probably get lights to film with. if it. It's gonna to continue to be a problem forever. England's not gonna change just because I started making YouTube videos. So one day I'll probably get a light and then I can film whatever the heck I'd like. Before we get started, me and Ken here, which is what we call him, don't name a lot of our plants, but we named Ken because it's Ken to palm. Makes sense, right? He's a big boy. He's a really big boy. Me and Ken over here would really love it if you gave us a big thumbs up and you commented down below on other plant videos you'd like us to do in the future, and you subscribe for more of me and of Ken. I mean, he is part of the background statement of my channel, so you will be seeing more Ken in the future always because he just looks nice in the corner, doesn't he? Right, let's get into it. Once Kentia palms are established as plants, they've gotten a bit bigger, they're pretty drought tolerant actually. Of course, they don't want to be in desert conditions because they're originally from tropical places, so it doesn't want to be too dry, but they can last with a little bit of drought in their watering. They do prefer to be too dry than too wet, but still best to try and keep it pretty regular. The best suggestion is that you water when the top layer of soil is dry, so that's anywhere between one and three inches or two to seven centimeters or so of the soil is dry. That'll make sure that you're not watering too often, but you're still giving them enough water for them to survive and thrive. You can see if your Kentia palm needs some water, if you stick your finger 
or a water meter down through just the top layer of the soil and see if it's dry. If it's dry, give them water. If it's not, don't. So I just water it when that top layer of soil is dry and that seems to work fine. Obviously more in the summer, less in the winter because that's how evaporation works with heat, I think. I'm not a scientist, I don't know what I'm talking about. If you don't water enough, the tips of the leaves can get yellow and brown, even and kind of get crispy, and that's not really ideal. Obviously, you want your plant to be as clean as possible and not brown. Yeah, so just give them slightly more water. You can trim the tips off if you don't want them to be brown in your house. When it comes to light, these bad boys can actually tolerate low light, but they're not gonna thrive and grow as much as they would in their ideal of medium to bright indirect light. So that's probably what's best for them. They don't like direct sun either because it will actually burn them. So don't put them in direct sun because we don't want burnt plants. We keep ours next to a north facing window. So it gets bright indirect light all day. The room is pretty bright. Um, it's actually this room that it's in just in a different corner. I move it every time I film because I like how it looks and I think it makes things better. And I like to see it and feel it. And you know, yeah. But actually lives in this room. You can also move them outdoors for summer because they do like it. They like the warmth. Um, which we'll talk about in a second. If you do move them outside for summer, make sure that you're putting them in a nice shaded area because if they get the direct summer sun, it'll be too hot for them and they'll get sunburned and we don't want that. When it comes to temperature, they can actually tolerate quite a lot. I read somewhere that they could tolerate anything between 25 and 100 degrees Fahrenheit or negative four to 38 degrees Celsius, which is a massive range. That's like below freezing to like a hot summer day in California. That's a lot of different places that it could live, might not thrive, but live. It's ideal is between 65 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 to 29 degrees Celsius. Like ideally it doesn't want to get too cold. So if you do bring it outside, in the summer, it's best to bring it back inside before the cold temperatures of winter kill it. So it, it, it's just it, just keep it keep it regular. Just if you if you're comfortable, it's comfortable. I'm sure it'll be fine. It was really cold over the winter here. I say that I'm from California, so really cold for me is like 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 12 Celsius or so. Um, that's really cold for me because I am a cold-blooded human and I need the sun to survive. Um, basically a plant. Um, but inside the house even, um, the room it was in didn't have double glazed windows and they are a little bit drafty, so it did get pretty cold. Uh, we were worried about it a little bit over the winter, but came out fine, Just do doing quite well. They do like some humidity. You don't have to give it humidity, but it does help. So for a while, this guy had brown tips on its leaves and I was really confused as to why it was doing that because we thought we were treating it as best as possible. And so I posted on Instagram being like, what the heck's going on? Some lovely, helpful plant people said it probably needs some humidity. So since then we've been misting him nearly daily, several times a week, and that seems to have helped. Also, as you can see, I've given him a haircut, so basically trimmed off the round tips of each of the leaves because I don't like how they look. But that's totally fine, you can trim them. Try not to trim the green bits though because they are healthy, so just cut off where it gets brown and it should be fine. But since then, we've been misting it and it hasn't gotten worse. It's actually gotten better and the new fronds that have been growing in haven't had it. So that's good. We're succeeding in the plant game. 
Also, misting it does help remove the dust that gets on the leaves, which is really good. If you don't want to mist your plants, you could also put it in a pebble tray, or if your bathroom is light enough, keep it in there all the time because it will enjoy the humidity from your showers and stuff. But it's up to you. It should be fine. Just give it a little every once in a while and it'll survive. So potting and soil are some of the most important things when it comes to taking care of your Kentia palm. They can adapt to a wide range of soils as long as they're well draining. That's probably the most important thing about the soil is that it's well draining. Currently we have this guy in a mix of average potting soil and perlite to give it extra drainage. Normal potting soil is probably a bit too heavy and will hold too much water. It would probably lead to root rot. We were experiencing that and Ken being a bit sad for a while because we made a bit of a rookie mistake at the beginning. I didn't know how drainage worked when we got Ken and so after we got him we wanted to repot him into uh, his big decorative pot. Yeah, so this big decorative white pot. We wanted to put him in that pot because we wanted him to go in the plant stand and the big white pot doesn't have a drainage hole. And so we smashed up a terracotta pot and put like big chunks of that at the bottom of the white planter and then put just plain old potting mix, not very well draining stuff on top of it. That provided some drainage, but also not really at the same time. We didn't know what we were doing. It was a rookie mistake and it led to Ken being a bit sad for a while. He wasn't growing new leaves and the ones in the middle of the pot were rotting because the soil was just too dense and it was holding way too much water. We didn't realize that for a while. We were really confused about what was going on. But once I started to get more and more into plants and learn more about potting and drainage and stuff, realized that it probably wasn't the best thing for him. So I repotted him back into a nursery pot that now sits in the decorative pot. So you still get the benefit of a decorative pot, but with the nursery pot in it as well. Kentia palms though really don't like being repotted. They've got really fragile roots and so they really dislike the entire process of repotting. So really don't do it unless it's a, an emergency. I mean, I get it. I wouldn't like to be forcibly removed from my home, stripped and then handled all over. That sounds pretty terrible. And that's what happens when you are taking it out of its roots. It just really doesn't like that. And so you want to avoid it as much as possible. And when you do do it, just be very gentle. Try not to alter the root ball too much and break off roots because that could be really detrimental to your Kentia palm. When it comes to fertilizer, you can fertilize this bad boy about every month or so in the summer and spring and none at all in winter. If you do fertilize, do make sure to use a diluted fertilizer because you don't want to overpower your plant and give it too much. It's better to give too little than too much. We actually haven't fertilized this one at all. He's been doing fine. We have had some new growth recently once we got him sorted out from that whole drainage mess. He has started growing new fronds and stuff, which has been really fun. I love seeing new growth on plants. So you don't need to fertilize. It's just a little extra bonus if you want a little bit more growth. There are some problems that you can encounter with your Kentia palms. They are susceptible to spider mites, mealybugs, and scale. This one did have a problem with some fungus gnats for a while. I think it's because of the whole soil issue. It was too wet and it just wasn't working out for many reasons, but got rid of those with some neem oil and yellow sticky traps. I can link the ones I used down below on Amazon. But for all sorts of pests, it's pretty easy to get rid of them as long as you catch the problem early. You can use an insecticidal soap and neem oil and just give it a good wipe. Get as much off as you can and should be fine. So another problem you can encounter is that Kentia palms can actually have mineral deficiencies. They can have deficiencies in potassium, manganese, and boron. So you could have to give your plant supplements. Give them a little vitamin. Bit strange to me giving your plants vitamins. I don't think we have that problem. I feel like it's only if your soil isn't very nutrient dense. So I guess when you're giving them soil, give them really nutritious soil and 
shouldn't be a problem, hopefully. So that's it, that's all you need to know in order to take care of your very own Kentia palm. Like I said, it's pretty easy, they're pretty tolerant, and they look dope. So if you don't have one, get one, and if you get one, take care of it. So me and Ken, thank you so much for watching. We hope that you found this video helpful and maybe slightly entertaining. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below on other plant things you'd like me to talk about and subscribe for more videos. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time. Bye. Woo. Freaking did it. Like I'll just get used to it. I'll be like, yeah, it's light now. I'm gonna film. And then it'll see? It just did. When I snap my fingers it changed. Cause I am magical.